All right, so back to the key row, which is this symbol here, which is basically the cross of Constantine. That's what it's called. And it's on the bottom. It's on the floor or the, or the ground of the Vatican, slowly happening throughout the year, the solar year. So a lot of people don't realize that Egypt gives birth to Christianity. So if you want to understand Christianity and even the teachings of Christ, you have to understand Egyptian religion, spirituality, um, and philosophy. So it would be really good to study Hermes uh, if you want to understand the Gnostics, the Essenes, um, the Abyssinians, the Christians, and, and so on. So uh, this cross, cross of Constantine, and, it's, it, and if people don't believe me that there's a, a link to Egypt or that Egypt started this, it's just amazing. Um, I mean, it's all over the Bible. It even says that um, Christ was crucified in Egypt. It also said he was crucified in Jerusalem, but there is a passage that says Christ is crucified in Egypt. That's referring to the human body. That's a whole other story, but Egypt represents the human body. So here it is, the largest Egyptian obelisk in the world, right in the center of Italy in Rome. There's a link right there. Huge link to Egypt. But then also, this whole symbol, which is called the Cross of Constantine, is also called the Key Rho. And this is Greek or Latin. These are actually out, these are letters of the alphabet X and I. But the reason why they named their alphabet that is 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 of significance. The Key Rho is actually referring to the chi or key, which is energy or life force or breath of God. And Rho is uh, the sun. Rho is Ra. Ra, like Horus. Horus's father, Ra. Amun Ra. So this is the energy of the sun. Uh, the life-giving force to human beings and to our planet. Without the sun, None of our consciousness as a being exists. So we need the sun to power us. And so this is part of the reason why the cross of Constantine or the key row is the focal point of, of the Vatican. And this is why they're mapping the sun. They're actually worshiping the sun and its effects throughout the year and throughout the great year or the platonic year. This is also where we get the word for Cairo. Cairo, Egypt, another huge link to Egypt. Cairo and Kiro are referring to the same word. This is just a Greek version, and this is an Egyptian version. So we all know Cairo is where the Great Pyramids are, the main, one of the main cities in Egypt. So hopefully you guys understand that um, Christianity gets its roots in Egypt and gets almost all of its philosophy, spirituality, um, psychology and mythology from Egypt. If you look closely at the Vatican, you'll find this pine cone. Why, why is there a pine cone on the Pope's staff? Why, why is the Pope's staff have this beautiful little pine cone on it? And then at the top it has its sort of scepter and jewels. He has a couple different staffs, but right here is this pine cone. And you, what, what he's trying to tell you is that they're actually controlling or attempting to control consciousness because this pine cone is the pineal gland. And the pineal gland is the seat of the soul and responsible for your, your light sensitivity or your sun cycle um, and your consciousness as it refers to light and how light powers consciousness. So he's holding the staff as a scepter of power. The Pope and the papacy and Rome, they're basically putting it in your face that they in fact know that the sun powers the light that hits the human body and affects consciousness. And, uh, and this is actually the same symbol that we call the caduceus. And the caduceus is, uh, in, in Greek gods, he's Mercury. Uh, in Egyptian, he's uh, called 
Thoth. Um, and Thoth is actually Hermes as well. And so this is merc Mercury-powered or mentality, Mercury mind. But it really refers to the higher mind of consciousness. The same symbol that we get in, that we hold in our medical community with these, you know, these little snakes that go up the caduceus. And I'm sure everybody's seen this symbol. These two snakes that go up the caduceus. And this is basically the kundalini energy of your spine um, through the process of yoga or yogic consciousness going up and down your spine. And as it goes up and hits that optic thalamus or hits this pineal gland and, and creates this higher vibration of light, your consciousness changes. And this is the overall symbol of medicine, of symbol of health, because throughout our lives from childhood to death, we actually are supposed to get healthier in our consciousness. We're supposed to become older and wiser. And this wisdom is, is true spirit, spirituality. It's, it's how to live. And this is where the caduceus comes from. This is the whole point in creating that symbol. It's, it's higher consciousness, higher mind. And they are attempting to control it. That's the whole point, is to control consciousness. And they also have this really, really big pine cone uh, in the Vatican that you can go visit. It's pretty large. It's got two birds on either side. And I believe these are ibises, which is also um, a big part of Egyptian culture. And then um, way off in the center of this uh, courtyard is this silver mirrored orb and this pine cone is reflected in that orb and this represents consciousness being reflected through light because inside your pineal gland uh, are piezoluminescence cells which work just like the retinas in your eye they they take in light and they emit light and this pineal gland is also sitting inside your optic thalamus which I'm not going to attempt to draw, but your optic thalamus is um, where the symbol for the eye of Ra comes from, which you, you guys have all seen. That is actually a cross-section of your optic and thalamus. And there's the eye of Horus. Right I'm sure you guys have all seen that. Um, Horus's father was Amun-Ra, which is the sun. He's the sun god. Different aspects of light. These are all just different aspects of light. So Horus, his opposing brother Set, Ra, and Osiris are all just different aspects of light. They are the solar cross. Ra is here, Osiris is here, Horus is here, and Set is there. And the sine wave runs through it, and the sun runs around the planets. Or actually, the planets run around the sun, but they appear. They appear the sun appears to rise and set from Earth. And so Horus is obviously where we get the word horizon. The pineal gland or the pine cone, the seat of consciousness in man. And the eye of Ra is, is in medical terms is called the optic thalamus. And the optic thalamus is Latin, medical language, um, which means the chamber of light. So within this chamber, you have this pineal gland, and as solar light affects the chemistry of your body, uh, and these chemistry, this chemical process happens and gets, comes back to the, to the optic thalamus and secretes this chemical wetting underneath it, it actually activates those piezoluminescent cells and makes light emit from the pineal gland, and it bounces all around inside your optic thalamus, and it creates more and more and more and more intensity through frequencies of waves. Back to that sine wave. Frequencies of waves. And these waves change your consciousness. They actually change your reality and your ability to be aware or conscious of reality. The way you think, the way you feel, the way your emotional body feels. Your entire being is basically centered through light in your pineal gland. 
And this is why they hold it on their staff. They're holding it in power, controlling consciousness. At least that's their attempt. And this is basically crystallization. This light bouncing around in perfect geometric shapes, perfect geometric shapes because those piezoluminescent cells are not round, they're actually crystalline. They actually help create and sustain the entire human body. Again, the body sustained by light that comes through it like a sine wave. We are essentially light. 